folks, all week we've been talking really about uh, chapter 5 of Daniel, Belshazzar, our hand appears, judgment. We've been talking about justice, judgment, mercy, a righteousness by the law, which we all fail at and continue to and have failed at, would fail at, can't ever achieve it. And then the righteousness that's based on the work of Christ, mm -hmm. which we can't add to, take away from. It's an absolute complete package that comes uh, with the bow tied on it. And we open it and we apply it. So we've been talking about that. We want to finish up the week on the subject, <clears throat> talking again about King Belshazzar, but Daniel's response to the king. And there's a couple attitudes and a couple truths that he brings forward that I think are really important for Christians to understand. And so we're going to be focusing on verse 17 to start with. Let me read it, and then we're going to dive in. In verse 17, it says, Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. We're just going to stop right there. Um, we're going to give you a couple you statements that Daniel made about Belshazzar saying, You. You. And the yeah. first is this. You keep it. You keep it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And yeah. I, I want it. Yeah. It's a very, a very powerful statement in that to King Belshazzar, he's offering the best that he has. He's offering the purple robes. He's offering the gold. He's offering him third position. So this power, right? Yep. The deity, the royalty, the yes. power. And that is what has been the most important thing yeah. to King Belshazzar this whole time. His kingdom, all this was what was important to him, um, which is why he receives what he does. But to Daniel and his wisdom and maturity and his walk with God, to him it's nothing. He knows that it is nothing but the values of a fleeting world, and it means nothing to him. And as believers, I think as we grow and walk in our faith, the longer we do, our values should be adapting that way too. Is, is, oh, we realize this is fleeting, this is dying, as we've spoken about before, all of it, and that shouldn't be our, our most important value. I so agree. Well, and the world is always saying, you know, how special is this? You should mm -hmm. get this, and maybe you should do this on Sunday instead of doing this, and, 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 and that attraction to Mm -hmm. what the world has and it's like no you can keep that no you can keep that I'm, I'm actually good with my faith I love God I love what I do mm -hmm. and so just that attraction to what the world has the purple robes and the gold yes. is um, it, you know that attraction becomes so much less um, important to us when we have the truth and we have Christ it really does get less uh, mm -hmm. th there's there's a picture I get, I mean, of this to try and put this into a scale of how Daniel perceived this. You've got this little dotty king. <laughs> right. Who's got this little blip in history. Yeah. Who has this one moment that the great king's throne that's eternal, that is a, this huge you, you, uh, king's throne that absolutely reigns over everything. Yeah. And Daniel's saying, you know, you keep the stuff you can, yeah. you think yeah. you can honor me yeah. with. Uh, I serve him. Yeah. It's and, so and, and you just have to wake up king. You yeah. serve him too, but you missed it. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So he had this, like, you keep, not because he's not saying that those things don't have some value. Right. He's saying the only value they have is going to be in service to the great yes, king. That's right. Yes. And that's, that's, uh, that's a great thing for Christians to get where yeah. you have yeah. to get an attitude yeah. uh, that says, you know, look, these have value only as they serve the great king. Yes. Absolutely. And so when they try to move you away yeah. mm -hmm. from that service yeah. through traction models or yes. whatever, just keep it. Yeah. yeah, just keep it. Just, just keep it. Yeah, you absolutely. keep it, King. Yeah. But I will serve him, and I'll tell you the interpretation. Yeah, and that's what he does, right? He says, you know, keep it, but I'll, st I'll still do this, but because it's from God, not because it's anything to do with you. It's because God wants you to hear this, and this is about to happen from the sovereign God. It's a chance for you. Yeah, you know, God has so, actually done this for you. Yeah, and he didn't see it. Yeah, he didn't see the chance that God gave them this creepy, wonderful <laughs> hand that came out of nowhere and did this, sorry, it's Halloween. <laughs> so, you know, and did this amazing thing, actually really amazing yeah. thing for him. He, 
he just saw it through the eyes of fear yeah. instead of the eyes of grace. He right. did. And so let's jump into the next you statement. Yes. I'm going to read the scriptures from verse uh, 22 on. Uh, let me give you a little brief thing in what happens in between. He reminds King Belshazzar of his father's journey right. and says, you remember? Yeah. You knew. Mm -hmm. You see, your father went through all of this. He had a clash of kingdoms. Yes. His kingdom with the eternal God's kingdom, and he surrendered. He humbled. He was humbled, mm -hmm. and he responded correctly. And then he comes up with this, and he says, But you, his son, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. There's our next statement, right? You knew. You, you knew. knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big statement. Yeah. Yes, it is. It indicates, of course, knowledge. And, and so Belshazzar wasn't receiving a judgment based on like, oh, this is surprising to me. I exactly. never. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa, what a shocker. Where did this no, come from? The hand may have been a shock, but he had all this knowledge. He had, he had walked that road. He had heard from his dad. We all have heard from his dad. We got to read his testimony. And so he's really indicating the knowledge that Belshazzar had. And yet this was his choice. He chose to be arrogant, prideful, focus only on the, the power of the world and, and what it held. He chose to reject God. So that clash of kingdoms, he chose which kingdom won. Yeah, exactly. The, totally. Hence the judgment. Totally. Yeah. 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 And this is where judgment is always based on God's justice, which is always perfect. That's right. He cannot be unjust. He He's cannot be God. unjust. Yeah. 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 Knowledge yeah. is a big part of this. It is. And he knew, I think the whole country knew, everybody in the whole world probably mm. knew. Nebuchadnezzar shouted it he, out. He, he, was, <laughs> he wasn't quiet about it. Uh, who, yeah. who the ultimate, who, who was king, who mm -hmm. was actually God. And for him to actually uh, denounce him in such a, a prideful, almost a arrogant way big towards time. God. Mm -hmm. um, he got judged. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think, you know, yeah, he did. And sometimes I think p Christians or even like people mm -hmm. think God is unfair in his judgment. Mm. He can't. The, you're missing a huge piece of the puzzle if you yeah. come to that determination. Yeah. And a huge piece of the puzzle yeah. is the knowledge base. That's right. So you, this is where we take a look at knowledge, though. God says he's revealed himself in creation. That's right. God says he reveals himself through the conscience, through an inner voice, mm -hmm. through his own speaking yeah. into our lives. Mm -hmm. God is always just. Yes. So if there's condemnation and judgment that comes, mm -hmm. the judgment and condemnation come because of actual data and fact mm -hmm. and knowledge. That's right. You knew. Yes. God will not judge innocence. No. God will judge where you have had this clash of kingdoms That's and right. this deep rebellion that Belshazzar yes. was living in, yeah. where his kingdom mm -hmm. was set against the other. Listen to the next verse. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. Well, mm -hmm. do you have to read anymore? Exactly. So Here's you said it's a choice. It's knowledge. Yeah. Instead, what you did, you said... I'm going to set myself up against the Lord of heaven. More or less, you're saying you knew he existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You knew the other kingdom. You yes. saw it confront yes. your father's kingdom. Exactly. You saw your father's response. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Awful. And it wasn't even, you know, he wasn't just ignoring everything around him that says God exists and God is real and God is love. He it, also, the direct testimony of his father, it was brought right to him. There was no hidden secrets about it. Everything was laid bare for him. Really? Yeah. Clearly. Yes. Yeah. So as was. clear as a picture could be drawn. Absolutely. And he had a chance. This is the thing, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know the end. If, if the, the story could have been changed, yes. if he chose to go on his knees at that moment. Yeah. We don't know because he didn't choose that. Mm -hmm. No, he did not. He was given the opportunity for grace and Absolutely. he didn't take it. Just like the man beside Jesus on the cross. Yeah. He had a last moment to have that grace of, from Jesus and he's, he's like, remember me. You I, know? I think that's a good way to picture this because you take a look at Belshazzar here. Okay. So he's, he's lived in this rebellion deeply right yes. up to the point. It's like at this moment, he's saying, okay, you win in this regards, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. He knows he's going to be yeah. judged, yeah. but he still says, I won't bow. Yeah. It tells you how yeah. deep this rebellion yes. wow. and how yeah. pridefully and yeah. arrogant he was standing mm -hmm. and practicing yeah. before God of heaven. Yeah. You know, knowledge is, is something that 
I, you just know God will judge according to the knowledge, but knowledge comes to us many different ways. Mm -hmm. But it also reinforces to us it should as a church, mm -hmm. as as all like yeah. our role in this yes. time, in our generation, yeah. in our blip in history. That's right. Is to be presenters of the gospel, yeah. public in this faith, yes. bringing the message. Yes. We're not here. You know, we're not here to just grow. In fact, we can't grow without doing. That's yes. right. That's the yeah. whole book of James. Exactly. Apply you must what do you know. to grow. Yes. And if you grow, you it's shown by your doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You reap what you sow. Yes. So, you know, yeah. as a church, like we have to understand the a very important thing that we do yes. in preaching the gospel. It's not that they don't have knowledge out there. But we bring specific knowledge. Mm -hmm. We get to be part of the bringing process rather That's than right. just leaving them to the whispers of God in their heart or their right. conscience or what yes. the nature is saying. Yeah, there's so much out there that can that we can use to dull that down, to mm -hmm. ignore that. But uh, us as believers, we should be in the convincing business. Yes. Like, l let's realize the urgency and yeah. what we are to do. Let's convince people, yeah. bring them. You know, as a church, we have many, many opportunities we yeah. provide to bring people to, to to hear the gospel and let them be brought into a deeper understanding. And and don't give up. You know, God will do the work in the heart, but let's present it. Yeah. This is what we need to do. We do. And so many people say, you know, I don't want to say this because I'm going to feel the judgment and I don't want people to not like me. And to reject. All, to no. Reject yeah. and all of those yeah. things, right? But what I always say is that, do you not love them? Mm -hmm. Do you not love them enough to feel that rejection for a moment, that to plant that seed? How much do you actually care? Right. Mm -hmm. How much do you actually care? Is this all just about you? Yeah. So challenging that as a Christian going, how much of this is about me? Mm -hmm. How much am I like, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's son? How much am I like him where I'm in the darkness and I'm not willing to actually see you, God? Mm -hmm. yeah. How much am I going to willingly blind myself to mm -hmm. your glory and your light? Because I'm going to, I'm good in the dark. Yeah. You know, and just how much of us as Christians have little pieces of that mm -hmm. in us that we have to it's it's amazing. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a love issue. It is. Uh, but let's wind it up with these mm. thoughts too. You see that when it comes when it comes to Daniel at this point in time, it's pretty brassy to stand up publicly at this moment mm. in front of the king and a thousand nobles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to say, King. Yeah. Keep your stuff. Yeah. You Everybody <laughs> else in that room lived for that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's Everybody why they were else. There. Yeah. 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 He stood and said, keep your stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and you knew. So this judgment is just. Yeah. And now it's coming upon you, your kingdom, everything that you've lived for yeah. is going to fall apart. It's gone. It, it's blown like dust and chaff in the wind. Yeah. These are all things that uh, we need to be aware of as believers. Yeah. It, yeah, it's very important that the message be clear. Mm -hmm. Why did why didn't God ask yourself this question? Why did God not just why did he have to bring the hand? Right. He could have just end the kingdom. Up. You're done. Yeah, done. Not giving him even that last warning. He right. gave him some grace. He that would give last him, warning. Yes. And for he the gave him, thousand yeah. nobles there yes. too, he right? Gave him a chance. Yeah. He gave him another chance. It could have just happened and we would have known it was the judgment of God. Yes. It, you know, but to show his hand mm -hmm. and say, I am God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah. That God, even with a man that's lived in rebellion, but it mm -hmm. also, when that man stands before God's right throne judgment, mm -hmm. the judgment of God will be fully just yeah. because of the heart of God, yes. Yes. which you spoke to, yeah. the heart of God, yes. which presents and lives with the cost of the message. Yeah. Yes. Live with the cost of the message. Yeah. Yes. Paul said this in, fin in finishing up his ministry amongst some. He said, I, I, I want to remind you that I've disclosed to you everything mm. about this gospel. Mm. And that I am now your blood does not rest mm. on me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So he was saying, I've discharged my thing fully. Done everything. I have lived out the heart of yeah. God. Yeah. I have brought the knowledge of God. Yeah. 
That's what you need to do. Mm. That's what I need to do. That's yeah. what the church does. Live out the heart of God. Bring the knowledge of God. We don't want to have the blood of people on our hands as they stand there and uh, before mm. God. We, they, they have knowledge from all these other sources. But there's nothing like God sending his messengers to give that appeal like he did with Daniel here. Mm. Be this kind of believer. Yeah.